Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I want to do another video. And this time I wanted to go over a concept of how the product rule and the integrating factor are related in solving a, a first order linear differential equation problem. It's not always intuitive to see it, but it's one of those things that if you work through it enough, you will start to see the relationship between, between the product rule and, and the integrating factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and, and explain first, review the product rule. Then we'll go through and look at the integrating factor and how that plays in. And, and you'll start to see the relationship between the two and how, how it's using the function and features of the product rule in order to make it useful in solving a certain type of differential equation. So first, let's just look at the product rule. First it is, let's back up here. You know, it have uh, the derivative of f of x and g of x. So the yeah, derivative of two functions of x, two, two uh, functions of x, is equal to the derivative of one term, you know, f of x times g of x, plus f of x times the derivative of g of x. So I'm writing this in, in g prime in this particular one, or using the prime symbol, but I'll start using the the d of x after what I just use it here just to save space. Uh, and now let's look at this in terms of application, right? So if you have y is equal to the sine of x and, you know, multiplied by x to the fourth, hold on, x to the fourth plus x. So you've got two different terms, both functions of x. And they're multiplied together. If you want to get the derivative of this, You'd have to take the derivative of sine of x, which is an f of x, times g of x, which would be x to the fourth plus x, plus, you know, x to the fourth plus x, excuse me, sine of x times the derivative of x to the fourth plus x. And that will get you the derivative of y, dy over dx. So you can see here, you know, cosine of x, you know, the derivative of sine of x times x to the fourth plus x plus sine of x times the derivative of x to the fourth plus x. You know, so 4x cubed plus 1. So it's a pretty simple rule, uh, pretty consistent, pretty easy to apply. You have a derivative, you know, two, you know the derivative in each, each portion of this, and then you've got it by the original term. So here you have, you know, the term of x to the fourth plus x and its derivative, and sine of x and its derivative. Now, if you needed to integrate this, you know, it's, you can easily see how this can be a, a fairly easy thing to integrate, you know, integrating both sides of this equation. And it would simply, you know, if you try to do it just with this, it would actually be a pretty complicated thing. But knowing what it is going to come down to, you just go back to your original argument. Now keep this in mind as we start to move forward. So here we have, you know, first order linear differential equation. And this is it in standard form. dy over dx plus p of x times y is equal to a function of x. Now, if you had to integrate this to try and solve this differential equation just on its own, just the way it looks by itself, it would actually be pretty complicated to do. So what you use is something known as an integrating factor. So to solve a first order linear differential equation, an integrating factor is used to put that standard form equation into the form of the product rule. All right. And so and this one we have the integrating factor, we're going to call that u of x, is equal to e raised to the integral of p of x d of x. And p of x is the coefficient on y when it's in standard form. So it has to be in standard form. Now you've got a coefficient of y. You can use this as the integrating factor. Again, raising it to base e, taking the integral of p of x d of x. Now, the product of p of x and the integrating factor, u of x, should also be the derivative of the integrating factor. 
right? So in order for this to work, this equation has to be true. So the derivative of u of x is equal to the product of u of x times p of x. Now if we multiply this through, you know, u of x through the standard form, you'll end up with u of x times the derivative of y with respect to x, plus u of x times p of x, which is a derivative times y is equal to u of x times f of x. Now let's just pitch into the left side of the equation. Here you have u of x, I thought it was just, you know, substituted u of x prime in here, u of x times dy of x plus u prime of x times y. That actually fits the product rule, right? Here you have a term times the derivative of y. You've got a term of y times the derivative of u of x. So it fits the product rule. So if we wanted to look at this in another way, we could actually do a substitution knowing that u of x times y, the derivative, is equal to this. Okay, now let's look at this being applied. So here we have the integrating factor. Again, excuse me, the uh, product rule laid out. And what we're going to be doing is looking at the integrating factor as it applies to this. Now, I color-coded the original terms as red and green, so they stand out. Uh, but this is just the product rule laid out again. And let's look at a particular problem. So here we have dy over dx plus y is equal to e to the x. So this is in standard form. It matches the standard form. There's no extra coefficients um, or anything that would take this out of its standard form. It lays out uh, perfectly in the standard form. So that means p of x in this particular case is just 1. There's an implied 1 as a coefficient on y. And I'm not going to go through all the math, but the u of x would just be e to the x. So if you think of what the equation of, of the integrating factor e to the integral of 1 dx is just e to the x. So now we have an integrating factor. We multiply through this equation in its standard form. And we end up with dy over dx is equal to the e to the x plus e to the x times y. And again, the right side of the equation is not really what we're focused on, but it's e to the 2x, e to the x times e to the x. Now, Looking at this, you know, reason I color coded it, g of x is in red, that's just the first term, and f of x being the second term is y. So you got a derivative of y times the term of e to the x plus the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. It's its own derivative times the term of y. So now it's in the form of the product rule. And if we wanted to integrate both sides, which you, you have to do in order to solve a differential equation, you're going to do, uh, you know, you're going to integrate both sides of the equation. But before we do that, let's simplify this by substituting something that's easily integratable on the left side of this equation. Again, keep in mind that it's the product rule. We're going to substitute an equal term or equal function over into that equation. So substitute this for this is easy to integrate because it is a derivative. So you have the derivative of e to the x times y, the original two terms, and it is a derivative. So you integrate that side, all you're doing is canceling the, the, the derivative with the integral, and you're left with e to the x, e to the x times y. And again, that's because these two things are indeed equal to each other. That's just the product rule laid out a little bit differently. Now, let's look at another problem. So you got x times dy over dx minus 4y is equal to x to the 6 times e to the x. Again, that is not in standard form. You know, there shouldn't be a coefficient over here. You know, those coefficients are what we can do. We just divide through everything by x. It gets, in, gets rid of that coefficient. dy over dx minus 4 over x times y is equal to x to the fifth times e to the x. So now it's in standard form. And in standard form, our p of x 
will be a negative 4 over x. Because standard form is positive, so it's a negative 4 over x. Right? And that will get us our integrating factor. Again, going through the mathematics uh, would get us a u is equal to x to the negative 4. Now we're going to, so this is the integrating factor. We're going to multiply this in its standard form. Notice I'm, you know, I'm back to the color codes here. You got the integrating factor of x to the fourth times dy over dx minus 4x to the fifth times y is equal to x times e to the x. All right, so now, now you've got the the product rule laid out. You've got the original term, the original term, x to the fourth and y, and here you have the relative derivatives, the derivative of y, and this is the derivative of x to the negative four. So you take your exponent down, multiply that as a coefficient, and subtract one from the original exponent, and that gives you a negative five. So you've got a derivative and the original term, a derivative and the original term. Now keeping in mind, that would be difficult to integrate. So what we do is we do this substitution of f of x times g of x prime, or as a derivative. So that will mean the integrating factor times y as a derivative is equal to the right side of the equation, x times e to the x. So again, the integrating factor, you know, lays out true. So x times, or excuse me, y times x to the negative 4 as a derivative is equal to x to the negative 4 dy over dx minus 4x to the negative 5 times y. So I hope that helps. I'll continue this topic in another video with a few examples. But, um... Go ahead and like or comment or any questions you have uh, or share the video to other people that might need this. Uh, again, this is Professor Cummings and thanks for watching.